Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to perform buckling analysis on a steel column. So as you can see, we have a steel column here. So the dimensions of this column is 8 into 8 into 80. Okay. So I have already meshed this column. I'll show you. Okay. So I have used hex elements to mesh this column. Okay. So we already have the model ready here. So to perform buckling analysis, first we'll have to uh, create material and property for this component. So we'll right click on this white browser area. We'll go to create and we'll select material. Okay. So we'll name this material as steel. Okay. As the uh, values for EG and new are present by default for steel in hypermesh. So we'll just click here and we'll press enter. Same for G, new and row. Okay. So we have successfully created the material. Okay. Now we'll create the property for this component. For this also we can just go and right click on this white browser area and go to create and then go to property. See. Okay. Uh, we'll name this property as solid property. Okay. Now we'll, we have to select the card image of this property as the solid. Okay. Now we'll set the material as steel here. Okay. And then we'll assign this material and property to this. Uh, meshed model of the steel column. As you can see here, I'll go to this meshed model and then under the property field, I'll select the solid property and in the material, I'll select the steel. Okay. So we have the model, we have assigned a material and property to the model. Now, after this, we have to create the boundary conditions. So by boundary conditions, I mean the load and the constraints that we'll assign to this component. Okay. So to create that, uh, I'll, we have to go to analysis, constraints. Okay. And then we'll select the, we'll fix the bottom face of this column. Okay. So the bottom face of the column so we'll select all the nodes on this face we'll click select the node we'll go to by face as you can see all the nodes on the bottom face are selected okay then we'll select all the degrees of freedom and we'll make them zero and then we'll click on create okay so as you can see constraints constraining all the degrees of freedom are created so when we go to this browser area on the left hand side we have a load collector here and we have a auto unload collector created okay so what we'll do we'll change its name we'll name it as fixed okay now after this we'll create one more load collector to apply the load on the steel column so we'll right click on this load collector, go click create and then we'll name this load collector as load. Okay. So under this load collector, we'll create the forces which will be applied on this column. So for that, we'll apply the force on the top face, top face of this beam. That is the face exactly opposite to the fixed face. Okay. So we'll zoom in. To apply the forces, we'll go to analysis and then forces and then we'll again select the nodes on this face. We'll click on node on this face, go to by face, select the, all the nodes on this face. Okay. So then we'll assign the magnitude. So the magnitude for this I've taken as 5.6 kilo newton. Okay, for this tutorial purpose, I have taken this 5.6 kilo newton and the force will be along the x direction. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. So it will be along the negative x direction. That is, it should be a compression force. So we'll make this fifty-six hundred. So this negative sign will indicate that it's along the negative direction of x axis. Okay. Then we'll click on create. Okay. And as you can see, it's created here. You see, force is pointing downward, and the magnitude is. Fifty-six hundred. So basically, what will happen when we apply a load in the point negative x direction and the opposite face is fixed, so the column will come under a compression load. Okay. So buckling generally occurs uh, when a structure is under compression load. Okay. So we have the model ready. We have assigned the material. We have the property. We have assigned the boundary condition. Now, apart from these two load collectors, we have to create one more load collector to extract the buckling modes for the structure. So, what are buckling modes? So, buckling modes are basically the shape the structure will take uh, when it buckles, like uh, when it's under compression load. So, we'll right-click again on the load collector. And we'll click on create. Okay, so we'll name this as E I G R L. Okay, and we'll select the card image of this load collector as E I G R L. Okay, and we'll give N D S six. Okay. So what is E I G R L? So E I G R L stands for real eigen value extraction by Landau's method. So this basically helps us get the modes of buckling for this structure or the structure which will be under analysis. Okay. So we have created the load collector. We have created. Now to run the analysis, uh, we have to create the load step. Okay. So for creating the load step, we'll again go to this wide browser area. We'll right click here and go to create, and then we'll go to load step. So we'll go to load step. Okay. So uh, we'll create a load step name static first. Okay. So linear static. So we'll change the analysis type to linear static. Okay. And we have to reference the constraint load collector here uh, in the SPC field. So we'll just click here. Click on load collector and select the fixed. Load collector for SPC and the load, and for the load field, we we'll select the load load collector. Okay. Uh, now this load step is for linear static. So for buckling, we have to create one more load step. So and we we'll name this as buckling. Okay. So what will happen in the, inside this buckling load step? Uh, I'll show you. So we will first change this analysis type to linear buckling. Okay. So now inside this buckling load step, we have to reference the linear static load step and the met method by which we'll be extracting the buckling mode. So as you can see here, there's a stat sub buckling that is subcase. So the subcase for this buckling it will be linear static. So we'll call that here. Against this field, and the method for extraction here will be Eigel. So we'll just click on this field here against method, and here we'll call the Eigel load collector. Okay. So basically, now we have set up. We have the mesh model. We have assigned the property. We have assigned the material, and then we have created the load steps. Okay. So now we everything is ready. So now we can just run the solver and analyze the results. For that, we'll go to analysis, and then we can go to opti struct here, as you can see. Then export options will be custom. Run options analysis memory default. Okay. So we'll click on this green button opti struct to run the solver. Okay.
so a pop-up window like this will open as you can see here okay so yeah as you can see we'll get a message once the job is completed that analysis is completed we'll get the value here okay so here you can do two things you can view the output file by going to this view and you can click the drop down menu here you can select the output file and you can view the values there uh, but we want to visualize the results right so we want to see how the structure is buckling what are the stress values on the structure so clicking on results will open a hyperview window as you can see here okay so we'll just go here and we'll click this and then we'll click on apply so as you can see here uh, these are the stress values on the column so the oh sorry this these are the displacement values on the column for stress values we hold two element stresses here and we'll click on apply and you can see these are the stress values on the column okay so but this is for linear static subcase but we want to visualize the buckling subcase so we'll go here as you can see here subcase one linear static is mentioned just click on the drop down here and select subcase two buckling okay now once i click this uh, this changes so we again have to click on apply okay so as you can see here we've got uh, the model so this is basically mode one for the buckling subcase like that we have six modes as you can remember we had put the value of six under the eigel load collector so these are the six modes which are extracted okay so what we'll do we'll just visualize how the structure is behaving better visualize we'll change the value to 10 here okay we'll just click on so as you can see there's a displacement at one end okay so this is for the first mode Now we'll go to the second mode. So if you can see, it's now going along the Z direction instead of the Y direction. Okay. Uh, I'll just go to the mode one and show you again. So if you notice here, uh, it's moving towards the Y direction. And for mode two, it's going towards the Z direction here. Okay, so likewise we can go to other modes. So we'll go to mode 4 suppose. As you can see, it's kind of buckling like this. You can see clearly on the screen how it's what is the shape it's taking now. Okay. Then we'll go to mode 5. So in this, as you can see, the shape it's taking okay so this is basically uh, how you can visualize or do a buckling analysis uh, in hypermesh so this was a very simple tutorial considering a very simple structure so i hope you like this video hope you understood and if you got to learn something new from this video please like share and subscribe and if you want to learn more about hypermesh you can read my blogs which i'll post in link to which i'll keep in the description and you can check out my other videos on my channel thank you